The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me on this Friday, January the 22nd, 2021. Today, we'll be discussing PCOS. Is it an autoimmune disease? And how is it related or connected to SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus? So you know what I want you to do. That's right. All the way from the United States to Nairobi, province of Kenya. That's right. Get ready to grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and to my listeners late at night. Now, you know I appreciate you. So get ready to grab that favorite glass of wine and come on and join the conversation regarding PCOS and SLE right here on My Story, Living with Lupus Podcast. All right, here is a disclaimer. If you have children under the age of 18, plug up their ears and get them out of the room. It may be inappropriate for um, them to hear if you have not discussed the facts of life with them. Now we're getting ready to discuss PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. What is that you may ask? Well, it is a hormonal disorder common among women of reproductive age. Women with PCOS may have infrequent or prolonged menstrual periods or excess male hormone levels. The ovaries may develop numerous small collection of fluid follicles and fail to regularly release eggs. The exact cause of PCOS is unknown. Early diagnosis and treatment along with weight loss may reduce the risk of long-term complications such as type 2 diabetes and heart disease. What are the symptoms? Well, signs and symptoms of PCOS often develop around the time of the first menstrual period during puberty. Sometimes PCOS develops later, for example, in response to substantial weight gain. Signs and symptoms of PCOS vary. 
A diagnosis of PCOS is made when you experience at least two of these signs. Irregular periods, infrequent, irregular, or prolonged, excess androgen, elevated levels of male hormones may result in physical signs such as excess facial and body hair, polycystic ovaries. Your ovaries might be enlarged and contain follicles that surround the eggs. As a result, the ovaries might fail to function regularly. Now, causes, the exact causes of PCOS isn't known. Factors that might play a role include excess insulin. Insulin is the hormone produced in the pancreas that allows cells to use sugar. Your body's primary energy supply. If your cells become resistant to the action of insulin, then your blood sugar levels can rise and your body might produce more insulin. Low-grade inflammation. Now, this term is used to describe white blood cells production of substances to fight infections. Hereditary. Now, research suggests that certain genes might be linked to PCOS. Excess androgen. The ovaries produce abnormally high levels of androgen, resulting in Acne. Now, the complications of PCOS are infertility, gestational diabetes, miscarriage, premature birth, non alcoholic stethohepatitis, metabolic syndrome. Type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, depression, anxiety, eating disorder, abnormal uterine bleeding, cancer of the uterine lining. Obesity is associated with PCOS and can worsen complications of the disorder. Now, when we return, we'll talk about, is PCOS considered an autoimmune disorder? Stay with me, and you'll find out when we return. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. Thank you for joining me and we're back and we're discussing PCOS. Do you think PCOS may be an autoimmune disorder? Well, we are getting ready to find out. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that PCOS can cause lupus? Hmm. Now, There is an association between PCOS and autoimmune diseases such as ANA and anti-T 
TPO that have been documented in systemic lupus arrhythmatosis. Now, polycystic ovarian syndrome is the most prevalent endocrine disorder affecting females. It is a common cause of menstrual irregularities and fertility during reproductive age. Now, when it comes to autoimmunity, could it be a causative factor for PCOS? Well, we know in autoimmunity, there is a breakdown of mechanisms responsible for self-tolerance and there is induction of an immune response against self-components. Autoimmunity is characterized by induction of autoreactive cells, B cells, T cells, and protein antibodies. Autoimmunity is classified as organ Pacific and non organ Pacific antibodies. Example of organ Pacific antibodies it includes grave disease, Hashimoto's, and IDDM, whereas examples of systemic autoimmunity or SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatic fever, and so forth. Although exact reasons for autoimmunity is not known, various mechanisms have been suggested for its development. You get sequestered antigens, Lymphoid cells um, may not be exposed to some of the self antigens during their differentiations. Molecular, when environmental substances that resemble our body components are exposed to the body, the immune system generates response against these substances which cross react with body's own tissues. Alteration of normal proteins. Drugs can bind to normal proteins and make them immunogenic. For example, um, methyl dopa binds to RBCs, surface proteins, and causes autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Now, autoantibodies in PCOS. Now, when we have lupus, you'll hear, well, we all hear about the positive ANAs which is anti-nuclear antibodies. Inflammation, immune hyperstimulation, and process of tissue destruction expose intracellular antigens that lead to production of ANA, which is a hallmark of autoimmune disorders. ANA has been detected in many autoimmune disorders such as, you got it, systemic lupus erythematosus, Sjogren's syndrome, polymyositis, 
and autoimmune hepatitis, antithyroid antibodies. Now, these antibodies um, against one or more components of thyroid are produced in autoimmune thyroiditis. Antithyroid antibodies include antithyroid, um, anti-TPO, thydro, thy, oh, thyroglobulin antibodies, anti-PT, TPO antibodies are associated with Hashimoto thyroiditis. Now, anti isolate cell antibodies. Now, these antibodies are produced when beta cells of pancreas are damaged and they can bind. Now, if PC OS is or has a connection with auto considered, well, I should say, if it is considered an autoimmune disorder, what could be the signs that an individual may? experience besides what I spoke about earlier with um, the PCOS and since research is showing that they have a positive ANA antibody and anti-TPO, which has been documented in systemic lupus and Hashimoto's, could we all be in the same boat together? Now, wouldn't that be something? And this, if this is true, we all should be fighting for the same reasons because it seems like from what research is saying that PCOS has all the traits of an autoimmune disorder. When we return, we'll go a little more into it. So stay with me. We all know the benefits of apple cider vinegar. Now, you guys know that I'm a vegan and that I have lupus along with other health issues. I used to take ACV every morning before I worked out, but eventually the taste of ACV got to me and I had to look for another alternative. And that's when a friend of mine turned me on to Goli. Goli is the first apple cider vinegar gummy. They give you all the benefits of ACV without the taste. That's right. Goli is vegan, gelatin-free, gluten-free, and 100% organic. And the vitamins and the ACV in Goli promotes a healthy heart by maintaining a healthy cholesterol range, controls blood sugar levels, and also curbs your appetite. And the best part about Goli, for every sale generated, 
a child in need receives a six-month supply of essential vitamins with vitamin angels. So if you don't believe what I'm saying, I'm going to give you some information so you can try Goli for yourself. Here's a promo code you can use. It's Sue Lynn One. That's S U E L Y N N E One. And you'll receive 5% off of your initial purchase. Also, I'll leave a link in the description in the podcast. So, why don't you go and try it for yourself? You won't believe how good it tastes. That's goalie. All right, and we are back. Okay, let's break some things down. We know that PCOS and autoimmune disease are closely related. While diagnosis with PCOS does not necessarily lead to an autoimmune disease, Research, though, states that it increases the likelihood. Um, PCOS is one of the most common endocrine disorders affecting women of childbearing age. Um, Let's go over and define what autoimmune disease is, what we know it to be. We know that Autoimmune disease is a condition where the body misreads your own cells and attacks them. Basically, your body is attacking itself. Um, This condition normally targets joints and skin, but it can also target organs, um, such as the case with type 1 diabetes, and how it damages the pancreas. A severe autoimmune disease, such as lupus, is a systemic autoimmune disease that can infect, affect the entire body. Now, some experts believe having PCOS increases your risk of acquiring an autoimmune disease. Others say, though, PCOS means you are prone to an autoimmune disease. Um, As your thyroid is common denominator for autoimmunity disease and PCOS. Let's go over once again the common PCOS link to autoimmune disease. There's diabetes type 1, SLE, celiac disease, grave disease, Addison's disease, Hashimoto's. Now, Are women with PCOS at increased risk for autoimmune disease? Well, PCOS is largely an inflammatory disease, especially because insulin resistance and hypersecretion of hormones are forms of inflammation. The link between inflammation and autoimmunity in women with PCOS have been extensively studied by the experts. Some studies note that women with PCOS 
have anti-ovarian antibodies. These antibodies have been associated with cases of amenorrhea, absence of menstrual periods, and deficiency of estrogen. Now, progesterone, PCOS, and autoimmune. You know, other researchers point out that low progesterone causes overstimulation of the immune system. This, in turn, results in um, more progesterone, which leads to various autoantibodies. When the level of progesterone is decreased, the body's ability to suppress hormones, this can lead to elevated levels of estrogen, which can lead then to um, autoantibodies. Some of the common autoantibodies detected in PCOS is, as I stated earlier, number one is ANA, anti-nuclear antibody. Number two, anti-RO. Number three, anti-DSDNA antibodies. Anti-TPO, anti-spermatic antibody, anti-histone antibody, insulin antibodies. Now, it should also be noted that disturbances in progesterone, estrogen, and overall thyroid profile are considered factors for gynecological problems, which could lead to a variety of reproductive problems and diseases. Now, since autoimmune diseases are tied to genetics, there is no real cure out for it. However, the symptoms can be managed by controlling or suppressing the overactive immune response, as well as by lowering inflammation. You know, um, if we all changed our diets, I'm, as I stated before in a previous um, episode, we are what we put in our body. So what we put in is what we get out. So try to switch around your diet to um, suppress some of your symptoms. Now, you may be asking, how can you do this? Well, you can eat more fiber. Eat more prebiotic rich foods. Fermented foods are your friend if you're suffering from PCOS. And take probiotics. That's right. Take probiotics. Now, um, there was an article which came out. Uh, We're talking about lupus now. The impact of first wave of SARS infection in patients with SLE weighting the risk of infection and flare. This um, is some new information that is out at it, I'll give you the abstract version. Now, it was a study, and the aim of the study was to investigate the incidence and clinical presentation of SARS CoV 2 infections in SLE cohorts. Now, the materials and methods used in this. SLE patients monitored by a single Italian center 
were interviewed between February and July of 2020. Patients were considered to be positive for SARS. Infections in case of one, um, positive serology associated with COVID-19 suggesting symptoms. Now, the following data were also recorded clinical symptoms and social distancing measures, disease activity, and treatment discontinuation. The results of this were as follows. 332 patients were enrolled in a study. Six patients tested positive for SARS two infection with the incidence being significantly higher in the subgroup of patients treated with biological disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs while no difference was observed for other therapies age at enrollment disease duration type of cumulative organ involvement or adoption of social isolation. The course of the disease was mild. 36 patients, which equals to 11.1%, discontinued at least part of their therapy during this time period. And 27, which equals 8.1% cases of disease flare were recorded. Um, this information, you can read further into this information. Um, I will have it in the link of this podcast. Also, how many of you have thought about taking the vaccine for COVID? Or how many of you have had your doctors suggest that you take the vaccine? I would love to hear from you. You can um, contact me via email at my story living with lupus at gmail dot com. Stay with me and I will be returning. It's that time. It's almost, well, it's 7.53 here in uh, Michigan. And it's cold outside. Baby, let me tell you, it is freezing where I'm at. Um, Got a surprise coming up for you next week. But... I want to leave you with this. I want you to be you. I want you to be creative. I want you to be kind. I want you to be brave. I want you to be honest. I want you to be creative. I want you to be humble. I want you to be thankful. I want you to be fearless. And if today all you did was hold yourself together, just know I'm proud of you. I'm Susan Hendricks, your host for my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I thank you so much for joining me on this Friday night. I pray that you have a peaceful, positive, safe 
blessed. And may God descend the angels around you and your family. I'll talk to y'all next week. opinions expressed on my story living with lupus podcast represents each person's individual experience by listening to this podcast or reading our blog you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved.